I got together with two colleagues and we thought that we needed to do a study abroad was, that was different from any other study abroad in all the United States of America. Very ambitious. And we started to brainstorm about all of these ideas, right? Because we didn't like that touristy approach to education. We liked the academics, but not too touristy. There were places in Cusco, places in Lima that we had been traveling to my, with my friends that nobody would visit. And we thought this was like a no-no, and we needed to bring it into education somehow. So talking to Carlos Schwalb, an amazing friend, an amazing writer, award winner of the Copé Prize of Literature, professor of uh, the University of Richmond for seven years, he decides to go back to Lima and t t tells me, Javier, are you interested in developing this idea that we talked about? And I said, absolutely, yes. So together with Carlos and Carlton Newton from the sculpture department, the three of us brainstormed all these ideas. And we came up with this uh, philosophy that whatever place we would go, it would be a place that wasn't really visited all that much and that people would not know any other way unless they would come to tell somebody else in, when they're back in the States. This is Miraflores, seen from a drone, probably, right? And you see, and you see the, the, uh, the hotels right here, and this is a gorge, and this, Pacific, this is a form of Pacific Coast Highway of Lima, and it goes all the way to that, that port of Callao in La Punta, right there. And the reason I show you this is because the hotels here are beautiful. This is the first <clears throat> visit that we make to the Anthropological and Archaeological Museum. And what we do here in Pueblo Libre, what we do is we have an overview of everything we're going to see in 15 days. So we have every culture, everything from pre-Columbian to Inca and everything in between. This is another incredible international museum. It may not look by the uh, facade, but the Museo Larco Herrera is probably one of the best collections of pottery of the Moche culture. And, uh, and it's an incredible masterpiece selection of all these potteries illuminated beautifully. We go to the center of Lima, and we, we have to visit the cathedral, the Plaza de Armas, the Plaza San Martin. We get to see the, the Archbishop's Palace, San Francisco, which is a church. The city looks just like the photograph. It's beautifully kept. What I'm telling you is that in any big city, Lima is almost 11 million people live in Lima. It's enormous, right? It's incredibly large big, it's developed. So there are, there are issues everywhere in the city. And if you're not careful and you don't know what you're doing, you certainly are going to get in trouble. But where we go and how we plan this, we are always together. We are always, you know, we have a system that I think has been, has worked for us in 23 years, 24 years. We've never had any issues. In San Francisco, though, here are the catacombs, the first cemetery of Peru. 50 to 75,000 bones of bodies are buried under the cathedral. There is a form of syncretism that occurs between the Moorish architecture and also the, the architecture of class, with a classical nature or Baroque nature. And so you have these architectures of different cultures merging together. This one is the Museo Pedro de Osma, the number one museum in colonial art. The person that was the last director of the Museum of Pedro de Osma is my best friend, Pedro Paula Laiza, who now is the director, executive director of the Mac Lima, where we're going to go is the contemporary museum of art. 
and the Amano Museum now is world class. The textiles that you see here, you are not going to see anywhere. This is unique for Peruvian textiles. They show them like this, where they have thousands of drawers and they open them up in front of you and you look at them. Pieces that are so unique that they have these big magnifying glasses and they, you can ride the magnifying lens and the textile is right here and you can see this magnifying nutting that they're doing. We're gonna eat dinner in this huaca. There is a restaurant in La Huaca Puyana in Miraflores. This place has been amazingly cleaned up. When I was a kid, we used to ride our bikes through here. I feel ashamed to admit this because it was all buried under mud. So we would just ride our cross bikes there not knowing. And they have now, of course, closed it all up and they have discovered that this were, there were rituals here. This is a Cultura Lima. And so you get to see these things and at night it looks like you're in the Middle East. We have really been committed to get to know the artists, the local people. Carlos Runzi Tanaka is a dear friend of mine. He worked and was hired by Alfred University. The you know people that are really good in ceramics come from Alfred. I don't know if you know. But Carlos Runzi is a, a really wonderful ceramicist and, uh, and he does in his, and he has agreed that he would go to, to be with us, meet us, and he's invited us to go to his home. The other artist that we're gonna meet is Ramiro Yona. Ramiro is having an amazing exhibit when we're gonna be there. These people are unique because they're not just great artists. They are really, really wonderful communicators. He's going to have 16 of these paintings in one room. After that, we go to the Plaza de Armas in Cusco. And in Cusco, we're going to see a lot of stuff. And we land basically so close to the, the site that we don't have to see the site that day. We wake up very early in the morning and the tourists are gone. The site is for us. What the Incas do with stonework, Pachacuti, this is still Machu Picchu, the Temple of the Sun, we, this is Sacsayhuaman, gives you, this is just on top of the city of Cusco, this, we're gonna go to Sacsayhuaman, uh, we're gonna see the concentric circles of Morai, and then we do Mara Salt, which is next door. This is like about 3,000, almost 4,000 pools of salt of water that comes underground and accumulates. And this, each of these pools is just this thick. And the water and the salt comes up and they harvest the salt and they send it everywhere to Cusco. This is Ollantaytambo. We go through the city of Ollantaytambo, which is really what you see in terms of stone. I don't know any culture that has, able to, has been doing this kind of stuff. We also go to Tipon. And we see in Tipon there are uh, the hydraulic studies that many universities, several universities from the US go to Tipon to study how the Incas were able to control water. We go to see Andahuaylillas. A very dear friend of mine was given the, the, the um, grants in order to do the restoration of this church in Cusco that is named like the um, Sistine Chapel of the Americas. In Cusco, we, you're gonna meet this amazing man called Sabino Waman, and he is a luthier. He builds guitars made out of one piece of wood. He's teaching here. So this is, is, is a Marlene Cayañaupa, who was invited by the United Nations to give a talk on climate change on the town of Chinchero. He, she is the matriarch of the city of Chinchero. And they have won contests of weavings all along, her town and her uh, 
uh, her business is making textiles and she's here photographed by National Geographic. The, the food in Peru, it, I don't know if you have heard, but the number one restaurant in the world right now is Peruvian. But it's really a remarkable place to try and experiment with food. Mm -hmm. And the hotels where we're going to go, they have absolutely, uh, uh, they serve meals there. They have their own restaurants, mm -hmm. being a four-star hotels. They all will have, you know, uh, restaurants. But Miraflores is like, wherever you go out, you're going to see cafes, little tables, out, food. I drink bottled water. But Peru has bottled water everywhere. And any bottled water from Peru is safe. The institute that organizes the trip for us is there's a woman called Karen Ilich, and she's the director of Encuentros Edu. Everywhere we go, we, we are with a representative with that person. And we will have help for in everything we do. The reason being, I am very, uh, I try to travel in a very um, secure manner. And it's very safe because there's a police of the district called, on top of the police, there's called Serenazgo. There are cars and police and motorcycles that are going around the city, you know, and protecting the tourists. If you were to live in Lima right now, you would spend 22% less money in Lima than Richmond. The idea that I'm trying to, you know, come here to really make sure that I really don't skip is that idea that in terms of sharing the Peruvian culture and the immersion, nobody does this like we do.